Okay, so here we have uh, the last part of question number nine. There's nine part D of practice paper B. Now this is actually not from the C1 paper or the C2 paper. This is a part I, I typed up myself just to make this um, slightly more relevant to the P2 syllabus because we know that the P2 syllabus includes drawing the gradient function. Okay, so even though we're given the gradient or the equation of this curve, I'm going to do it without the equation because that's the kind of thing they test you on. Now we do know that A is um, the point 412, although we don't really need it, and B is a point 6 and a quarter. But to draw the gradient function, so I'm going to draw here y equals f dash of x in this graph here. Okay, to draw the gradient function, okay, you've got to think very clearly. Okay. Um, you've got to think about what's happening to the graph in this area and you look at certain key points. Now the key points in drawing the gradient function are the turning points. Now because at the turning point the gradient is zero. So at the turning point for sure without a doubt the gradient function will pass through the x-axis. Okay, Whenever there's a turning point the gradient function will hit zero. It will hit the x-axis. Okay, so you can see here the gradient is positive and then it becomes negative. So the gradient function will start off on the positive side of the x-axis before this point because it's a positive gradient and then it's going to go to the negative. If it was a minimum turning point then the gradient is negative and then it's going to be positive. So it will be going from below the x-axis to above it. But here it's going from positive to negative, so it's going to be coming down towards the x-axis, it's going to hit zero and then it's going to become negative. Okay, so we have a turning point here as well. We can't, in this question remember, x could never be uh, negative, so it doesn't carry on, it doesn't go like, it's not going negative and then positive, it's just starting from here, starting from zero, and you can see the gradient here is positive. If you drew a tangent at any point between zero and a, it will have a positive gradient. It's rising between 0 and o. A. So the gradient is, it's increasing. The gradient is, um, it's, sorry, the gradient is positive. The gradient is positive between 0 and A. Okay, but something else happens here. You see, this gradient starts off at 0. It's like, at this point, it's a 0 gradient. And it starts to increase. It starts to get steeper and steeper. So its value, the, the value of the gradient, this is the value of the gradient, gets bigger and bigger. But there reaches a point somewhere around here, somewhere around there, where the gradient stops increasing and starts to decrease. The, I'm not saying that it's the, the graph is falling. The gradient is still positive. All this section of the gra gradient is positive, but uh, the, the, the gradient is positive, so it's going to be above the x-axis and all of this area. But what happens is it reaches its a maximum value and then it, the gradient starts to get less and less. You see it's steeper, less steep, less steep, until at A it becomes zero again. Okay, at A it becomes zero. Okay. Cross highs there. Why does it want to move? Okay. <laughs> this thing is annoying. Okay. Oh my God. It's not really that much, just a sketch. This thing doesn't want to stay where I want to keep it. Okay, that's better. Now, so the gradient is increasing, increasing, increasing. It reaches the highest value, then it starts to decrease again. So basically, this point is another point that's really important. This point is another point that's really important. That's called a point of inflection. Not the type of point of inflection where the gradient becomes zero, but the type of point of inflection where the gradient reaches a, a highest value or a, you know, a maximum or a minimum value in that area. So now, what happens at a point of inflection? Well, the gradient is getting bigger and then it starts to go smaller. So the gradient function will kind of have a turning point because the gradient is getting bigger and then at the point of inflection it starts to get smaller again. Okay, so that's the other important point. So you've got these two points where there's a zero gradient and this point where there's going to be basically it's going up, the gradient is getting bigger then smaller, so there's going to be like a maximum Okay, we don't know how high up it is. We don't need to work that out here. Just a sketch. Um, but you can basically, you realize that it's going to go like this. The gradient's increasing, reaches the maximum point, starts to decrease, then it reaches zero, and then after A, it becomes negative gradient. 
and you can see the gradient just drops. Okay, there's no point of inflation, it just drops, so it's just going to keep going lower and lower over there. Okay, so basically, let me just start drawing this part. So we've, we know that it looks something like this. It reaches a maximum value. Okay, it starts to drop. Becomes zero, so it starts from zero, turning point, zero gradient. It's increasing, it's increasing, but the, uh, it's increasing, so it's going up and up and up and up. Okay, um, and then it reaches a point where it stops increasing and starts to decrease. Okay, so it starts to decrease, so the gradient starts to get, the value of the gradient starts to get lower and lower. You see the gradient's getting lower and lower. Its value, it's the, the, the tangents, if you drew them, will get shallower and shallower until you get a zero tangent, you get a zero gradient at, at A. So this is like, this represents the point A there, right? And then what happens after that is it's negative, and it just keeps on falling, basically. So it starts off small, and it gets, I mean, it starts off as a low negative value, like, for example, that might be a gradient of minus a quarter, then minus a half, then minus one, then minus two, then minus three, then minus five. It's dropping, so it just starts, it just carries on dropping like this. So you can, I want to make it a bit neater than that. Okay, but well basically there's nothing else happens in this section except the gradient is negative and it just falls. So that would be a graph of the gradient function. Okay, so the important points are turning points, these two, and points of inflection. Turning points, the gradient, the graph has to hit the x-axis. Points of inflection, the graph has to turn. If it's going from increasing gradient to decreasing gradient, you'll get a maximum. If it's going from, for example, if it's going from, uh, if it's a, here you've got, say, something that's, um, let's draw it the other way, like something like this. If it's going like this, where the gradient is, it's decreasing, it reaches a maximum value, then it starts to increase. So the gradient here you'd have, a, it would be above the x-axis because it's positive, so it would be above the x-axis, but it's going to be, it starts off quite steep, start, high gradient, gets lower, then it reaches a maximum value, which isn't zero, it's not horizontal, it reaches a maximum value at this point, and then it starts to increase again. So this type of point of inflection will cause a maximum, sorry, a minimum, point, a minimum turning point in the, in the gradient function. Okay, but this type causes a maximum. Okay, because it's getting bigger, then it starts getting smaller. The gradient's getting bigger, then the gradient starts getting smaller. This represents the value of the gradient, and this is the gradient, the tangent of this represents the gradient. This is the value, so gradient is positive above the x-axis, the gradient's um, getting bigger, it's going higher up, this value is getting bigger, okay, it reaches the highest value, it starts getting smaller again. The gradient starts getting smaller, but it's still positive, it's still, it doesn't go negative, it's still positive. The gradient of the original function is still positive, it's still positive, so it's still above the x-axis. But then at the turning point it hits zero and then the gradient becomes negative again. Okay, now, um, I'm going to um, compile maybe a couple of more questions, if possible, um, tonight, later on, which uh, some of you might find in the morning, about gradient function. I'll try my best to do that. Okay, um, uh, but uh, that's basically the end of that paper, practice paper B. I was going to add a few more questions to this, but I've got to go and do something now. Um, but I will try my best to add a few more questions about gradient function um, before your exam. Okay, so thank you for watching.